We've all heard of a supernova, which is the depth of a star that is much more massive than our sun, resulting in the formation of either a neutron star or a black hole. A hypernova is an extreme version of a supernova, resulting in a very powerful rotating black hole with energy jets. Then, about five years ago, we heard of a kilonova, where two neutron stars collided, releasing a large amount of gamma rays and heavy metals. And now astronomers have observed yet another new type of stellar explosion called a micronova. As the name suggests, it is a nova but in a smaller form and magnitude and it occurs in the most bizarre manner where fusion explosions are contained to the polar regions of stars and occur only there. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. There are several kinds of stellar explosions. Supernovae are the ones that we're most familiar with and we tend to hear the word supernova a fair bit. There are two main kinds of supernovae. One is where a very massive star runs out of fuel and dies and implodes, collapsing inwards under its own gravity. All that material collapses to a small point while the outer layers of the star are blown off. This ultimately results in a remnant that is extremely dense and contains a large amount of matter. This is usually a neutron star or a black hole. This is one kind of supernova. There is yet another kind that happens very commonly in binary star systems. A white dwarf, which is yet another dense object like a neutron star or a black hole, starts feeding on matter from another star or a less massive white dwarf. In this case, there is matter accreting and building up in this feeding white dwarf and this in turn triggers a runaway thermal fusion reaction because there's enough matter leading to a supernova. How are white dwarfs themselves formed? Well, they are created when there is a star that's dying, but this star doesn't have enough mass for a supernova style explosion. So this star simply shakes off its outer layers and becomes a very small but dense white dwarf. Our sun is expected to go this way billions of years into the future. So, there are two main types of supernovae, collapsing massive stars forming a neutron star or a black hole, or a white dwarf accreting material and going into a runaway fusion reaction. There is also now just a nova, which is not necessarily related to a star dying. Nova just means new and it is usually a transient or temporary event in the skies that suddenly causes the appearance of something like a new star and this fades out in weeks or months or sometimes even years. Novae also occur with white dwarfs in binary systems. The white dwarf draws matter from another star or a less massive white dwarf, creating an atmosphere as the matter enters this feeding white dwarf. This atmosphere is then heated up, triggering a runaway fusion reaction just in this region on the surface of this white dwarf. This does release energy and creates a glowing envelope in space that looks like a new star. This is much before any supernova can actually occur here because enough matter has not transferred. There is very less mass that is ejected and only from the surface of the white dwarf. These glowing events in space can actually even be observed for a couple of centuries as the white dwarf continues to feed. A hypernova is an extremely energetic form of a supernova. The resulting black hole rotates rapidly and there is a lot of ejection of material at very high speeds. The luminosity or brightness of the event is many magnitudes greater than a regular supernova. They also produce gamma ray bursts which are pointed jets of very deadly gamma radiation that is capable of wiping out life on this planet if there is a ray that's pointing directly towards Earth. A kilonova or a macronova also happens in a binary system, but this time with two neutron stars or a neutron star black hole pair. When these two objects revolve around each other and eventually collide, there is a kilonova explosion. These explosions are not as bright as supernova in visible light. These are in stars and these explosions are in turn detected as gravitational waves. They glow very bright in other parts of the spectrum. 
Beyond all of these, there are yet more kinds of explosions. There are failed supernovae, there are supernova imposters where a supernova-like event occurs but the original star does not die. There's luminous red nova that occurs when two stars collide and many other events. But the larger and more energetic processes that cause a star to die, like supernovae and kilonovae, release tons and tons of heavy metals like gold and platinum and selenium and ruthenium and many other names that you and I haven't heard at all. These heavy elements are flung out at nearly 20% the speed of light. Micronovae are now newly observed or rather newly identified and understood. A micronova is a kind of explosion that has been identified for the first time now by astronomers from Europe who have published a study in the journal Nature. Going back, in a nova which occurs in a binary star system, a white dwarf starts to feed on material from another star. At this stage, once enough matter is accreted onto the surface of this white dwarf, there are reactions happening all over the place on the surface of this white dwarf which start to throw off glowing material. This is a nova. But what this team has observed is that these reactions and explosions can sometimes be localized just to the poles of the star. These localized explosions are even smaller in magnitude and last only a few hours. How can reactions become localized to certain regions on the surface? If the matter can move in such a way and get localized there. And how can matter be localized? By powerful magnetic fields, of course. So micronovae occur on white dwarfs with very strong magnetic fields. These magnetic fields move all the incoming material towards the star's magnetic poles. So fusion occurs only in these poles in the form of micro reactions, which are about a million times less than the strength of a plain nova reaction. Therefore, the name Micronova. Not that these reactions are negligible in terms of humans or earthly scales. They are still happening at the base of a star, so they are extremely powerful nuclear reactions capable of wiping out planets. The thing with these Micronovae explosions is that there are so many white dwarfs with strong magnetic fields and there are so many binary systems with white dwarfs in them that they could actually be quite common around us in the universe and also in our own galaxy. But of course the problem is that they are very fast and transient. They last a mere few hours so they're very hard to observe. This team also found them while analyzing test surveys where they saw one bright flash that lasted a few hours and subsequently searched for similar phenomenon in the data and found two more. Of these three, two were previously known white dwarfs but the third one was new and had to be confirmed that the reaction did indeed come from a white dwarf. European Southern Observatory's VLT telescope was able to confirm that all three were white dwarf reactions or explosions. So now astronomers have yet another form of explosion taking place on stars that they did not know about previously. Discoveries like these not just help grow our knowledge of the universe, but also in the near term help fund more scientific projects for the very purpose. Going forward, as astronomers now become more aware of this phenomenon, it is likely that more and more micronovae start being discovered very rapidly in the near future.